today's video, I wanted to tackle three look for less projects. Let's get started with our first one. I found this frame at the thrift store for only a dollar. I knew I liked the shape of it, but the frame itself, it didn't have a very secure backing and the glass kind of felt like it was coming out. So I wanted to change this up a little bit. I'm going to clean off this glass and reuse it for this project. Now, as you may notice from the photo from the beginning, I found this gorgeous vintage framed art piece that's from Michaels. It is on sale for only $10. Now, I know that may not seem like a lot of money to some people, but some people just can't simply afford to buy new home decor. So if you have an old frame laying around your house, you could totally do this project. Now, I found another frame that was in my frame stash in my craft room. I liked the glass that was in it. It had this kind of almost frosted look, and I thought that would add a little bit more interest to the overall piece. So after I cleaned this one up, I wanted to go ahead and paint the frame. So I am going to be using both of these glass pieces. So I'll set those to the side for now, and I'm going to go ahead and focus on the frame. I want to paint all of this a matte black. Before I tackle the back of it, I did want to point out I'm unscrewing all of the pieces that were on the back of the frame to hold that glass in. We're not going to be needing these, but I will keep them for future use just in case I might need it for something else. I let that one dry. I'm going to go ahead and paint this one black as well. I think I might go ahead and use it. Maybe not in this video, but I definitely will use it more on the black side than this purple color. I found this really nice vintage print online. I will try to leave it linked down below if I can find where I got it. I do believe I got it off the National Gallery of Art, but I thought the aesthetic of it, like the color, the vibe of it, really matches the same type of photo I'm going for with the one in, in the inspiration. When cutting this, I decided to leave that border that the original photo had after printing this off. It doesn't match exactly how the inspirational one does, but I wanted to add a little bit of character to my own, you know, since I'm I'm able to make this my own, so I'm just gonna go with it. So I just laid this picture down on one glass. I put the frosted glass on top. And I think this is looking so good. So just to secure the photo in place, I did add a little bit of this tacky glue from Dollar Tree on the back corners of the picture so it would stay in place on the glass. When you're in a bind and you need to dry your project, you just don't have time to like let it sit here and dry. So my solution is I'm going to be using this heat gun and I was so lucky enough for Hippie Crafter to send over this heat gun for me to use. It's not just for epoxy resin. You can use this for all your projects to dry them. It's very portable, very lightweight little heat gun. I really, really like this. It's about $20 on their website, but I do have a coupon code that I can link down below in the description box in case you guys are interested in this piece. But as you can see, it's dual temperature, 100 and 200 degree Fahrenheit. I have already opened it and started using it. It's really, really nice. It comes in this little package here and it shows a lot of their products and things on the paper that you get in there so these are all the products that they carry at this time here's their website again i will leave that link down below as as well as the discount code so you guys can get a discount on your first order or you just plug this in and then you have your two different settings here and it even has this little piece where it can rest once it's uh, starting to cool down so you don't want to touch this nozzle part on anything when you're cooling it down because this gets really hot when you're using it. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this in and just kind of dry this really quickly. Should take no longer than five minutes or so. I'm just using the low setting right now. dry still kind of wet see that 
Our heat gun will speed up the process. So that is nice and dry. We can start to glue everything. I need to glue! Okay, so I need to glue this piece down first. And I'm just gonna be using some hot glue. I'm gonna go around the edge of the inside of the frame. Go ahead and press down the frosted glass into that hot glue and let it sit and cure before I move on. I'm gonna go ahead and glue this piece and you can see that I just glued the picture to this glass. For the same situation, I'll have to actually glue this down in here. Then to be safe, I'm gonna go over this. There's a string of hot glue that got stuck in there. You can see it right there. Oh well, I guess. I don't know what else I'm supposed to do. Okay, so the last thing I wanted to do to this piece, I wanted to add a little bit of distressing on the corners. So it kind of mimics the same one from Michael's. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of white, okay. And then I'm just going to add that to the corners. Okay, so I accidentally rubbed some of the black off. But I kind of like that look a little bit better. So I'm just going to keep doing that. I think that looks really neat. It's not exactly what I wanted. I wanted that to be more of a white but you know what this is what just happened i'm just gonna go with it <laughs> that's kind of what happened it's fine i'm just gonna leave it i don't want to keep going too crazy with it Tell me in the comments below what you think how I did on this dupe. Did I nail it or no? <laughs> I'd love to know your thoughts down below. Before we get to the next DIY, I'd like to mention in today's video, it's actually a part of the Look For Less 2.0 challenge. And this is hosted by Zulia and CJ DIY. Absolutely love these creators. They have a special guest co-host, Miguelito's DIY. So I will leave all their links down below in the description box as well as a playlist so you can check out everybody's video that participated in this challenge. I just wanna say a quick thank you to Zulia and CJ for putting this together so that we're all able to come together as content creators and just create for you guys here on YouTube. All right, now let's get into the next DIY. For this next project, I found this vase from Salvation Army. It was only $5. I do believe this was originally from Target, from the Jungalo collection. It was probably a $20 vase. So I only got it for $5. I really liked the shape of it. I just don't really care for the texture that's on it or the color of the vase again i kept the shape in mind and i've had this for a minute so i wanted to transform it and i figured this would be a perfect video to do so i found this here i absolutely love the shape of this vase but i am definitely not paying no 265 dollars for a vintage turkish vessel it's not gonna happen so i figured the best way to kind of get this piece without having to pay the price is just add a handle to this vase and then I'm gonna try to paint it and do some like of the similar texture that these vintage vases have on this one. I know it's not like exactly the same shape but I still think it's gonna give me that look that I want for a lot less. So let's get started. And as with all my handles, I am gonna be using this air dry clay I got from Hobby Lobby. I love this stuff. It works for me. If you like a different type of clay or however you want to make your handle, then, you know, you can go for that method. But I'm just going to use this clay 
I'm gonna probably need about that much. So probably like right in here. Just push it out. Probably enough to make my handle. So I'm gonna start to shape this out, making sure I get all the air bubbles and little cracks and things out as I'm shaping it. That's gonna be key so that your handle doesn't crack. This is pretty thick, but I will have it kind of thinned out a little bit here. Okay, I probably did get way too much. I could even make two handles if I really wanted to, but I'm not sure if I want to do that. I wanted to try to get the similar look. Now I do know from that picture, the handle starts in the middle of the neck. So around like this area is where I'm going to start it. And then it kind of comes out almost straight and then back down like this into the side of the base. So about like right in there is kind of where I'm going to do that handle. As you can see, it's very similar to the photo here. So now I'm going to go through and make sure this is straight and secured to the vase. And I'm going to use a little bit of water to get this a bit smoother so I don't have any fingerprints or cracks or anything in this piece of clay. And then also with the sides, when I'm making sure that it's going into the vase, I want to make sure this, all of this right here is smoothed out as much as possible. But I will be going over this whole piece with a little bit of joint compound to give that texture I'm looking for to cover this texture that's on this vase. So this is not dry just yet, but I did finish shaping out the handle how I wanted it. I think it looks good. I'm going to go ahead and put on my all-purpose joint compound. I'm just going to go over all of this and just avoid this area so this can dry. Once this is dry, I'll glue it back on or whatever I need to do and then go over it with a thin layer of the joint compound so it blends in. I make sure when I'm done with my brush to really wipe it off with paper towel, throw it in the trash, and then I'll rinse it because I don't want to clog up my drain with this joint compound. And I also like to store this with a bag inside so none of the air will touch the joint compound and harden it. All right, so it's just a pretty thin layer just to cover the texture that's there. That's what I'm doing. And I'm going in this kind of linear like motion back and forth like this because I really want to mimic the lines that's on this pottery. You can see that there's some lines going back and forth like that. And that handle is still drying, so I do need to be pretty careful when I'm turning this around and stuff, and I don't want to bump it. I'm going to go ahead and finish the rest of this off camera. Now that the piece is fully coated, I'm going to go ahead and let it dry. Alright, so the product has pretty much dried. I really like the texture that it's giving. I might do a light sanding on it just so I don't have these weird lines going like in the wrong direction. If you can see that, it's more diagonal. I want it more straight across the vase. My handle, as it dried, it fell off of the vase, which is no big deal. I'm just gonna take some more of the joint compound and I'm just gonna slap it right, a big chunk of it just in those spots and then stick my handle right there. And then I'm just gonna add more around the edges. And just kind of blend this out. And this will dry and it will actually secure our handle to the vase. Okay, for the paint, I'm gonna be using a little bit of this color here, which is Woodsy Smoke. I got this from Hobby Lobby. That's the brand, Anita's. And then just a little bit of white, I'm gonna mix with that. This is from Dollar Tree. Layer it on like this. Maybe go back over it with the white. Blend it out. Just go back and forth. 
Okay, I think that this color might be drying a little bit darker on this material. So I found a different color. This one's called Taupe by the same brand, and I'm just going to try that one. You can see it's more of a kind of tannish grayish. I just tried it right here, and I think this looks a lot better. It's more that color I'm kind of going for, but I do think this other color will add a little bit of depth, so it's fine. But you can see right here, it looks more of the color I want, like this grayish kind of color. I will leave some of the white popping through. I'm just going to randomly put this on. I'm going to go ahead and go over some of the areas with some more joint compound. I think this will add a little bit more white back into the piece, as well as some more texture that will be kind of on the surface. I'm hoping it turns out really well. I don't know, I've never done this, like putting joint compound over the paint. I'm also trying to fill in little areas that I can still see the original color of the vase. So I'm just trying to go over those mainly. <laughs> and then just blend this out like this and make sure I'm doing those same motions, you know, back and forth to give that ceramic feel. And this vase has come a long way. If you remember what it looked like before and here is the after, let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. So lately on Instagram and Pinterest, I've been seeing these lovely vintage Turkish breadboards and I love the burnt look that they have. They add so much character to a space. So I wanted to create my own because I definitely did not want to pay a hefty price tag for that. Once you're happy with the shape, then you can actually go ahead and start sanding. But I wanted to go ahead and use the other half of the board and make another cutting board with that piece. I might as well use it up. <laughs> After my boards were sanded really well, I took them inside and I just started with applying water down to the board. That way it would kind of soak in first before I put the paint on. I wanted to paint this instead of staining it because I wanted to have that burnt look. So I mixed in two different colors, kind of a woodsy smoky color with a brown, and I just applied this all over the board. Once I got to about the edges, of the board, I started applying watered down black paint to really soak in and give that burnt look that I'm going for. And this might look a little crazy at first, but trust me, you have to trust the process with this. It's just watered down paint and then you take paper towel and wipe it off the board. It's just like staining.
And I just want to point out, look how beautiful this color turned out. Don't forget to paint your edges. I did all mine with a darker color just so it looks more burnt on the edges. And then as soon as it starts to dry, you just want to take a wet, damp paper towel. Just give it a good scrub and that will get a lot of the paint that maybe you didn't like a dark spot or something. Just keep rubbing it and it will take most of that paint off. And here is how it turned out. I am loving this color. I think it looks spot on to our inspirational photo. The last step was to give it a little bit of distressing. So I just took a knife and pretended like I was cutting up some bread or something like that on this board. I seriously love this board. I think it looks so much like the inspirational photo. Even the color is pretty spot on with how I mixed those brown paints and then watered it down and wiped it off. I think that the black even looks like it is burnt. This turned out really, really good in my opinion. Let me know if you give this a try to get this type of vintage Turkish breadboard look. And as for the other one I created, I'm actually still not sure what I want to do with it. I was going to do the same, like, burnt look, but now I'm not really sure. Leave a comment down below what you think I should do to this board. I was considering staining it an aged, weathered color, kind of like a grayish, tannish, almost beige color. So let me know what you think. I just don't know yet. I'm thinking maybe finding some kind of food sealer for this one as well so I can actually use this one as a cutting board. Don't forget to check out that playlist I linked down below in the description box as well as the hosts and guest hosts of this collaboration. I also have that coupon code linked down below so check it out. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!